You'll hear it from almost anyone that uh, any man's right mind should avoid the American woman, specifically the Western woman. Uh, the implication there, of course, is that when we speak of Western women, the, uh, the Eastern women, the women on the other side of the globe, are somehow exempt from it all. And I did make a video a while back, uh, which was more anecdotal than anything else, uh, concerning this fallacy, the fallacy of the non-Western woman. In this video, I'm going to adduce some evidence, some articles, and talk specifically about South Korea. Now, uh, many of you know, as I was mentioned before, I sent, spent a few years in South Korea a while back. I, I worked there and I lived there. So it's, it's, it's the Asian country I know best, even though I'm a bit rusty in my, uh, my South Korea in this these days. And I'm going to uh, show and introduce some articles which uh, talk about the uh, skyrocketing divorce rates in South Korea, uh, specifically in reference to the uh, Asian economic crisis of 1997. Many of you know about that, but basically in 1997, and I won't go into the causes because that's a separate issue, uh, Southeast Asia primarily, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, and so on and so forth, but also South Korea, where they're all hit by a very severe economic recession. Um, they had some serious, serious issues. Now, since then, South Korea has recovered from that quite well, in fact. In the process, however, their, uh, their sovereign debt uh, doubled, so they didn't completely escape, uh, completely unscathed, but that's neither here nor there. But let's talk about uh, South Korea in general. Now, South Korea is an extremely, or was rather, an extremely traditional society. The basis of this traditionalism in South Korea is what's called in Korean yugyo, which is uh, uh, Confucianism, rather Neo-Confucianism. And Neo-Confucianism describing a kind of Confucianism that's only a couple of centuries old, rather than, well, well over two millennia old. And it is differentiated from the old school Confucianism. Um, now, Neo-Confucianism is also practiced in, in a very similar fashion in Japan, and there's a lot of uh, cross-cultural similarity between South Korea and Japan, although I will defer, I'm not an expert on either country, but I know a lot more about South Korea than I do about Japan, so I won't talk too much about Japan. But it is a very traditionalist uh, philosophy, and uh, it is, of course, patriarchal, um, as most traditionalist philosophies were, and family-oriented. And for the longest time, and even persisting to, the, uh, to this day, although always uh, weaker and growing weaker as uh, time goes by, uh, Neo-Confucianism has remained a force to be reckoned with in South Korean society and culture. Um, notions of honor, familial honor, obligation, all of these things, they're all part of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, it's, I would argue, even part of the language. Uh, you know, South Korean for example, has uh, various um, suffixes and, uh, well, they're basically suffixes that you can attach to, to, to uh, virtually any word that indicates station. There, there are so many of them, I, I don't even, I can't really count them all because they just, but generally speaking, the consensus, there are seven. I, as a foreigner, I, I've never understood them all, I'll be honest. Um, and they can really, uh, it, it's a, to speak Korean properly, which I can't do, certainly not these days, unfortunately. Uh, is to make proper use of these, and it's this indication of your station in regards to someone else. So you have uh, endings or suffixes that you can attach that uh, will be re used in reference to the emperor or king, to those who are your elders, to those who are quote-unquote beneath you, usually age-based. So it's, it's infused in the very language, you know, the culture it is, that is. So you have a very traditional culture, much more so than, say, China. China, during the uh, communist revolution, lost a lot of its old school, uh, old school traditionalism, uh, which was replaced by you know, communism and modern thought. Um, they don't have a whole lot of that. Korea never underwent anything like that, so they, they've retained that to a large extent. So much for that background, so ne Neo-Confucianism. Of course, in, in a heavy, heavily, heavily traditionalist society like South Korea's, um, you have uh, family structure being very important, with the patriarch, the father, being the head of the household. And that has been eroding very rapidly. Now, this 
uh, has uh, several causes, but you know, one cause cited by Barbarossa is, of course, the uh, mechanization, technological progress progression. And I would argue that South Korea is one of the most technologically savvy countries in the world. It has the fast internet, in fastest internet connection in the world. I mean, you, you can walk, th there are most, most public places in a park, if you walk through a park in South Korea, you can you have internet access. So it's, it's really uh, savvy in that, in that sense. But specifically, um, in reference to the 1997 economic crisis, as well as a general loose, loose, uh, loosening of, of mores, if you will, due to mostly Western influence, likely K-pop, Korean pop culture and music, things like that, uh, there has been a rise, a steady and sharp rise in divorce. So to get an idea of uh, just how uh, steady it is, I'm going to read some information off, uh, and I'll get back to some of the main points. So this is a very brief one. South Korea is July 12th. 19, no, there's no date there, but it's, oh, sorry, it mu must be but at least uh, from 2011. South Korea divorce rate surges. The number of households in South Korea that are headed by divorced adults has passed 1 million, according to a new government report. It says the number of divorced householders hit 1.26 million in 2010, accounting for about 7% of all Korean households. And more than 80% of these divorced households are headed by people aged over 40, with 57% of them headed by women. Go figure. That is a majority, 57%. Uh, this is a steep jump of 40% since 2005, but part of a trend that shows the divorce rate skyrocketing since the early 1990s, when it was virtually unheard of and very much frowned upon. Uh, Sunu, one of the South, one of South Korea's largest matchmaking services, had not one single divorce client on its books in uh, 1993. Many people think the big change came after the economic crash of 1997, when men's unquestioned status as the head of the family was fundamentally shaken. Add that to the fact that Korean traditions and taboos are being shattered everywhere you look, it would seem that the rate will go on climbing for a while yet. So more on that in a bit. This is a longer article um, from uh, New York Times. And uh, it's too long for me to read the whole thing off, um, but um, yeah, I'll read some of the most relevant bits off. So, rapidly changing attitudes towards divorce, as well as such other issues as marriage, childbearing, and cohabitation show a South Korea in the throes of social transformation. By the way, this is from 2003, so it's, it's a bit dated. It's almost 10 years old. Still anchored in Confucian values of family and patriarchy, South Korea is fast becoming an open, westernized society with the world's highest concentration of internet broadband users, well, a pop culture that has recently been breaking taboos left and right, and living patterns increasingly focusing on individual satisfaction. Uh, social changes that took decades in the West or in Japan, sociologists here like to point out, are occurring in here in a matter of years. In the last decade, this is from 2003, mind you, South Korea's divorce rate swelled 250% in keeping with women's rising social status. Note here, uh, this is not from the article, this is my own personal note. Uh, note here, in keeping with women's rising social status, it is not overtly stated that women are initiating the divorces, but why else would they say it's, it's almost patently obvious in the last decade, South Korea's divorce rate swelled 250% in keeping with women's rising social status. But it shot up even more after the economic crisis of 1997, which caused widespread unemployment and shook men's basic standing in the, so in the society and family, said Hwang Hee Bong, a deputy director at the uh, Korea National Statistical Office. And it goes on and on. And feel free to, uh, to read further. There's a bit of information about sort of Korean reality TV shows talking about divorce. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, <sighs> we have that. So we see that a couple of things. One, due to Western influence, there's been a, an erosion of uh, traditionalist values in South Korean society. Um, things that used to be sort of frowned upon, such as public affection and what have you, that's all changing. But both articles and you could find others that would point to it as well, uh, point to 
um, a pivotal moment or juncture in history, namely uh, 1997, the uh, Asian economic crisis, specifically the South Korean one, where uh, the, the catalyst, if you, were, if you will, was introduced, where, uh, well, fuel for the fire. I mean, both articles suggest that the that during the crisis, when men lost their jobs, were suffering from uh, wide-scale unemployment, divorce rates shot up, um, and have been steadily rising since. Now we need to go back to the idea that women, uh, tr even traditionalist women, and you know, uh, let's let's be honest, what traditionalist women really want, marriage is and has always been in every culture about money to women. It is about cold, hard cash. When uh, these men fell on hard times and were unemployed or uh, couldn't earn as much you know, in, in economic hardship during the 1997 uh, crisis, divorce rates shot up and continue to shoot up thereafter um, be, because, and of, uh, impl heavily implied, of course, is that it's women who are doing, who are doing this. I, you could, uh, I mean, I've read other articles that, that actually stated matter-of-factly, um, and I'll try to find some at a later date. But women, yes, women are primarily concerned about money. Women do not have a romantic bone in their bodies. Uh, this is uh, one of the many fabrications we've grown up with, and uh, it's simply not true. It's not true in the West, and it's not true in a highly traditional Eastern Asian culture such as South Korean culture. Um, women care about money. They care about their, uh, well, their own well-being. They don't really care much about anything else. And um, a perfect example of the male utility of the toaster oven, the toaster oven who... Uh, through economic hardship, lost his job, and of course was discarded and thrown away like refuse. Uh, no woman standing by a man there. Uh, well, he was just a toaster oven. That's what you do to them. By contrast, I mean, this is pretty interesting. I think uh, back in the day uh, when uh, things were really traditional, uh, things were different. I mean, I do mean really traditional. So let me just read off a little information here. The traditional role of t total female submission persisted in Korean villages until recent, relatively recent times. One Korean scholar who came from the conservative Chungcheong region recalled that when a high school friend died of sickness during the 1940s, his young bride committed suicide. Her act was commemorated in her own and the surrounding communities as an outstanding example of devotion to duty. So, of course, women don't know anything about duty. It needs to be uh, enforced upon them by uh, culture, uh, cultural norms that, uh, that basically uh, shame them into doing that. Now, I'm not suggesting that married uh, or brides who lose their husbands should commit ritual suicide, but um, it just goes to show that uh, without extremely, extremely, extremely uh, harsh measures in place to uh, regulate female behavior with regards to marriage, um, they're going to run hog wild. And, of course, that they, well, pretty much only care about uh, money. What, what other reason could there be at 1997 and post-1997 for the uh, Korean divorce rate to shoot up by uh, such an astounding rate? It just uh, it doesn't add up in, unless, unless the fi uh, Asian financial crisis, the South Korean financial crisis, was a catalyst uh, showing that. Remember, um, we're not just talking about 10%, uh, 15%. Uh, we are talking about 250%. Um, 250%. This article that Syed said is from 2003. It's much higher now, almost 10 years ago. So it's all about money. Uh, now, th that is the condition I mean, if, uh, the, that a traditionalist wife, a traditional woman, will uh, hinge her so-called love on. Now, women don't know anything about love, but her, her, her favors, her sexual favors, 
Um, and now, now the Korean society and the traditions and culture are becoming increasingly, uh, well, passé, and uh, it, they're sort of dissolving as we speak. Um, it, it becomes it's becoming very clear that women just don't aren't even very interested in it in the institution, although it's still there. I mean, there, for example, the taboo that women in South Korea have to get married before thirty, sexual marketplace value in play there, and uh, all, all of those good things. But I mean, it's it's just demonstrative. I think that that's what marriage is about to women. It's about cash. It's about uh, feeling well protected, having their comfort. And the man is is just the toaster oven. There's one other element I'd like to talk about in uh, South Korean culture. It's uh, a legal matter, and it's uh, quite different, mind you. Um, one final note that uh, in an article from this year, 2012, uh, South Korea has the is number ten in the country is of highest of the highest divorce uh, rates of divorce incidents. So, yeah. It, it's making some astounding progress in that area. Good for them. But yes, there, there's one final point I'd like to talk about that is a rarity, and uh, it's something that we don't have here, um, or haven't had in quite some time, that really only Islamic countries have. And in South Korea is one of the few countries that where adultery is punishable uh, as a crime. Adultery is not just a uh, you hurting your partner, it is a criminal offense. And I'll read off some of this. Um, and it's not that long, maybe I can, read I can read it all off, and then I'll talk about it a bit. Uh, South Korea is one of the few non, and I've known this since I lived there, so I'll be, this is just for your information. South Korea is one of the few non-Muslim countries where an extramarital affair makes a criminal offense. Under the adultery law, the convicted can be sent to jail up to two years. For the last two decades, there have been a few challenges to overturn the law, but the country's constitutional judges upheld it every time. This issue became huge again in 2008 when a well-known actress, Ok so was indicted on charge of, hmm, I think it was written by Korean, on charges of adultery. Short history of Korean adultery law. There were various kinds of adultery laws throughout the many Korean dynasties as in most countries. The first modern age law was implemented, implemented by the Japanese government in 1908 two years before they colonized the country. As many of you know, Korea was uh, brutalized by Japan during the occupations of the early 20th century. Um, the law applies the changes unequally to, uh, applied the changes, the charge unequally to married women. Okay. This adultery law was rewritten in 1953, eight years later after uh, Korea got its sovereignty back with the intent to establish monogamy and to protect women's rights, women's rights. It was meant that the adultery charge should be applied to men and women equally under the law, and I would agree to that. Uh, however, the reality was different, and it was controversial if the law was beneficial for wives at all, was, as society was still very patriarchal. And well, In most cases, men still had the better deal in divorce suits because men's extramarital affairs were generally accepted. Yet for a long time, ironically, it was women's organizations that strongly supported the law. They believed that the law would give wives better chances to receive financial settlement for divorce. Where have we seen that before? Changes. Korean women's legal status has been improved, and more of them have become economically independent. They don't tolerate unfaithful husbands and try to hold an unhappy marriage anymore. Adultery isn't something that only husbands could do. More women think they could, get, could have extramarital affairs themselves, and they actually do. Naturally, the number of husbands suing against their wives on charge or charges of infidelity has, has been growing. Uh, now it's criticized that in many cases the law is being abused for spouses to get revenge on each other or to secure financial settlements from divorce courts. There have been four petitions to abolish the adultery law in 1990, 1993, 2001, and 2008, and all of them were overruled. So notice when, when husbands want to... Uh, I wouldn't say take advantage of it to practice the law or to, to adhere to the law. They're trying to take advantage of it. Uh, when women try to do it, it's okay. Numbers. Every year, about 1,200 people are indicted under the adultery law, and about 40% of them are sent to jail. So that's a sizable number. The number of divorced uh, in South Korea in 2007, so it's a bit old, uh, it's from 2008, uh, was 124,600. And... About 11,240 couples out of them fought over divorce because of infidelity. 
about 40% of those, it was the husband, in about 40% of those, it was the husband accusing his wife. This article is unfortunately, unfortunately written in a bit broken English. Uh, Miss Ok, a famous Korean movie star, filed a petition in 2008 that the adultery law was an infringement of, her, of human rights after she was sued by her husband, uh, Bak Chul. She admitted that she was guilty on the adul- under the adultery law after efforts failed by the constitutional uh, court. After she was sued by her husband in 2007, she had a news conference where she confessed that her husband and she only had a handful of times of sex during their 11-year marriage. Who knows if that's true. She asked him to work on it or divorce her if he didn't want to try. Uh, Mr. Buck didn't show any interest in resolving the issue. He didn't divorce her either and believed he didn't do it because he needed her money. Mm. There's kind of a gynocentric angle to this. He always had large credit card bills to allegedly spent on drinking and enjoying uh, places like room salons and massage parlors. Mm. After 11 years of effort, she got frustrated and had, had an extra matter, marital relationship with a popular pop singer. <laughs> of course she did. Uh, Ms. Mr. Bach refused to reveal his credit card statements and the divorce suits that he filed. He was asking for custody. $2,000 monthly expense for the cost of a child, half their assets, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, so anyway, maybe the guy was a boozer. I don't know. But this is, of course, an interesting element to the whole picture of South Korean culture uh, because, well, we don't have anything like that in the States. Nothing like that. Um, uh, you know, adultery is not a crime, uh, and I don't know if it necessarily should be classed as one. Um, it's a difficult question. But just to, as an example, if I had been living in South Korea in recent times and had been married to my ex-girlfriend, uh, she cheated on me, well, I could have uh, sent her to court and had her sent to jail in theory. Um, so interesting in that respect. I don't know if I'd send her to jail. She probably wouldn't have learned her lesson regardless. It doesn't seem to be much of a deterrent or anyway. But no, I do believe in equality under the law, so I think cheating husbands in South Korea should go to jail just as cheating wives should. But you notice how when a woman does it, it's different. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's always this double standard. And of course, that's a um, different... Uh, by the way, I missed this part. There was a survey, a survey carried out last year that re- reportedly that reported nearly 68% of South Korean men and 12% of women confessed, not had, confessed to having sex outside of marriage. So, I mean, we know that women cheat at least as often as men, if not more. They're just much better covering up. They're not going to talk about it. That's uh, in their nature. So, yeah, equality under law, no. So the adultery law in in South Korea is all well and good as long as it's men getting grilled uh, for cheating, which, as I said, it's the right thing. If you have a law like that, both sexes need to be punished equally under that law. But when a woman does it, it's an infringement of human rights. It's just really, really weird. Um, So, strange things uh, going on there. So, predictions for the future, well, they're not too positive, and there's no reason to be. The traditional society is crumbling. Uh, It's disappearing all the time. You know, anecdotally, I have friends who still live there, and uh, they tell me it's just, you know, it's, they say, they tell me, they say, Stardust, uh, I left in 2008. In the four years you've been, plus years you've been absent, I mean, things have changed rapidly. It's just not the same place anymore. And I believe them. Korea is, I mean, this is off, totally off topic, but I'm, I'm actually very impressed by South Korea. They really built themselves from the ground up after a near total destruction, colonization and, and brutalization at the hands of the Japanese, then, and, then the war, and they've done a really great job. I'll, I'll give them props for that. And of course, it's it's in increasing this uh, technolization, mechanization, and and all that good stuff. But of course, the consumerism, which I mentioned in the previous video, and uh, the influence of the West, for better or worse, er- eroding traditionalist con- uh, Confucian's values. So that's going to be gone. I'd I'd say, in a, even in a decade, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot uh, left to that. Now, I'm not. I'd be, what I'm interested to see is how it actually affects the culture on a micro uh, level. You know, maybe the language is going to start changing. Um, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, this is, I guess, somewhat boring to some people, but bear with me. Uh, I can't always make everything interesting. So, drawing on my linguistic background, um, even though language itself is a biological faculty, um, 
it's entirely biological. There are ele cultural elements uh, within a language, and it's hard to say which comes first, but I would argue that the, the language reflects what, b back and forth whatever cultural elements are, are present. So uh, one means of expressing uh, respect and deference amongst different people in different languages uh, can be endings or personal pronouns that uh, indicate station. For, as I mentioned, you can, you can suffix different things to Korean words, uh, much like Japanese, those of you who know Japanese, which will you know, change the status uh, or the, your approach to talking to someone, whatever state, station they might have. And in the West, we have, we've had things like that. Some countries, languages, those of you who know Spanish and French and German, they have that to a much lesser extent, albeit just in the personal pronouns and some verb forms. And we used to have that in, in English as well. It's long since gone. Those of you who know uh, the expression ye, well, ye is the, uh, the subject form of, uh, of you. You is actually, in a is, is actually an object, and ye was the polite form to address people you didn't know up until the, about the early 18th century, and then it, thereafter it sort of steadily just disappeared. Um, we lost that in English, and you know, it doesn't mean that the culture fell apart because of that, but it's interesting that you can see that uh, these loss, this loss of sort of uh, politeness has kind of, well, disappeared uh, in, in English. And in American culture, everyone is always on a first name basis. Uh, and I don't want to go too off topic here, but um, I would argue that people who are interested in traditional values, that, that source, uh, which I'm not necessarily interested in, that often coincides. Walk into any store in the United States, the guy is your best friend, he's calling himself Bob, and he's asking what your name is too, and I, I'm not used to that. I've lived outside of the States for far too long. So I didn't want to go off too much on topic there, but it'd be interesting to see if that actually starts affecting the language in South Korea as well with regards to station and, and how elders are addressed. I believe it is. I've heard reports of elders being offended by the way um, younger people are talking to them, um, not using the proper endings and forms, so it's interesting. But yeah, what, so what's marriage about? We know marriage for every woman, no matter what country she comes from. It's about cold, hard cash. It's about money. It's all about the money. There are a few exceptions, right? Women in rural situations. So take um, the famed YouTuber, Wis uh, I think his name is Logic, Wisdom by Logic or something like that. Traditionalist guy who left the United States and is living in the, in the boonies in, in the Philippines, uh, married a traditionalist woman in the boonies in the Philippines, rural village. Yeah, uh, as Barbara also pointed out in his video, uh, women uh, who are living in rural situations see no reason they're dependent on their husbands. They're not going to get divorced. It's only in highly mechanized urban environments where the divorce rates are going to skyrocket. Uh, we saw it in China, we see it in India, we see, we're seeing it in South Korea. It is everywhere. So men, do not be fooled that by going abroad you can find a quote-unquote good woman. Uh, a good woman, well, it's in that sense a bit of an oxymoron. Remember, women are only as faithful and loyal to you as the benefits you are providing to them. And uh, without an extreme system, and I admit that committing ritual suicide when your partner dies is extreme, uh, to keep that in place, well, good luck. Not going to work. So that's South Korea. That's what's happened to marriage in South Korea and a bunch, bunch of other superfluous information. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that little bit, and I'll see you soon. Take care.